track there from Pig Out called Wicked. Here on Kiwi. It's now 16 minutes past nine. The Radio Wemo Breakfast. Kiwi. Well, a new book is out called Conversations with Myself by Nelson Mandela. And uh, in to talk to us all about it is Vern Harris, who is the head of the memory program at the Nelson Mandela Foundation Centre for Memory and Dialogue. Vern, hello and welcome to Hi, uh, to, to the show. Yeah, um, tell us about the the, um, the the organization you're part of, the Memory Program. It's uh, the Nelson Mandela Foundation Centre of Memory and Dialogue. In fact, what is the Foundation Centre all about? Well, look, he stepped down as president of the country in '99, and the foundation was set up basically to provide him with an office. He raised a lot of money for things like HIV/AIDS programs. And uh, we've been enabling him then to do a lot of work that he wanted to do uh, post-99. But increasingly now, as he steps away from public life, uh, we're focusing our work on memory and dialogue uh, as part of contributing to his legacy and ensuring that the values uh, that uh, he embodies are not forgotten Mm. uh, as we develop as a country. Mm. And also, uh, history in general isn't forgotten? Well, yeah, it's a good point. You know, I don't think human beings learn from the past, uh, don't learn from our mistakes. But uh, well, There's this whole thing of history repeating all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, we, we're saying that history is important because you find inspiration to, to, to do the things that you need to do to make the future, mm. um, the kind of future that you need. Mm. And the dialogue side of things as well. So the ongoing discussion about the past? It's about the past, but... Actually, it's about the future. So uh, we we use the memory resources to help us identify areas where we need to intervene. So, for example, two years ago, there was an outbreak of violence against foreign nationals. And uh, we were asking ourselves, well, what is the responsibility we carry as Nelson Mandela's office to do something here? What we did was to identify communities which actually perpetrated the violence. And we've worked for two years in those communities to try to find... Uh, why it is that they did what they did mm. and what they need to happen to change their attitudes to people they regard as mm. strangers. Mm. It's so complicated, isn't it, the yeah. situation in South Africa and, and, and uh, the motivations behind the things that people do and the different factions and, and everything. It, it, it is, it's not that easy to make sense of, is it? Yeah, you know, back in the 80s and early 90s, uh, you knew who the enemy was mm. and uh, you knew who your comrades were. Uh, not so simple anymore, but I think it's 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 an interesting space globally. Uh, I think of it as as kind of the front line in struggles between haves and have-nots, uh, which means that you know you have opportunities there to 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 begin to find sustainable solutions to particular problems, and then mm. hopefully, you know, nail the big one eventually. Mm. And of course, um, you know, almost centre to all this is Nelson Mandela's story, really, isn't it? And um, and the long road to freedom has been out a, a, a wee while now, and I think a lot of people have um, have gotten into that and read that. Um, this new book, Conversations with Myself, is quite different. It doesn't so much tell the story, the historical record, but it's more inside his head, isn't it? I think the premise is uh, we know what he's said to audiences mm. over the years, and uh, he's said a lot. But what does he say to himself uh, when he doesn't have an audience? Um, what does he really think? As a man. As a human being. And uh, uh, what does his voice sound like uh, when it's not formal, it's not prepared? Yeah. Uh, and it's really difficult to get into that space with him. But here with his notebooks and his diaries, uh, you're seeing that part of the human being. And are these um, notes and diaries taken f- just in the time that he was incarcerated, or is it a longer expense? It's a, it's a longer stretch. In fact, uh, I would say the majority dates from uh, 1990 onwards, uh, his notebooks in particular. Uh, he has a man who's now in his 70s, uh, and he's involved in really complex negotiations. Mm. And to keep on top of all of that, he keeps notebooks yeah. uh, and journals uh, day to day so that he knows what he's he's doing he knows what he's undertaken to do yeah it's a way of keeping a handle on things one thing i was struck by the fact that um that these notes still exist particularly the um the calendar entries that he had a, a des- desktop calendar that he would write on occasionally on certain days um i mean that was a it was a pretty harsh environment that, and brutal environment that he was in and it was i'm amazed that he was allowed to keep all this stuff and you know there, there weren't guards who would just sort of throw it away well a lot of stuff was removed uh, stolen from him basically yeah um, so uh what we have had access to is a small part of a much bigger archive. It's risky, though, isn't it? Get, you know, seeing seeing the man raw 
as himself. Um, does it risk, you know, because he's a lot of people put him up on the on on the pedestal and um, um, well, not not to use a word like God or anything like that, but but to bring him down to the level of everyday man is a bit risky. I think it's risky, but it 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 makes him more accessible, and in in a way, it 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 increases uh, the. Uh, significance of his accomplishment is he's taken the stuff of life that all of us human beings are given and he's done something extraordinary with that yeah how does he feel about um the the book uh he's enjoying it uh i've, I've on two occasions now um been part of a group of people our team chatting to him about the book um just one a- anecdote uh he he on one occasion opened the book and it was reading from his 1962 diary. He was in Morocco being trained as a guerrilla. And uh, in his diary in 1962, he talks about being trained to shoot for the first time and how they were really impressed with him. He then tells us now, all these years later, well, actually, you know, I, I fibbed a bit there. I had had some training before. <laughs> <laughs> so the reliability of the record, you know, it's a question. <laughs> so sometimes he's not even honest with himself in those. Uh, none of us are. Oh. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So did he, um, for, for the purposes of putting the book together, did he go back through all these notes himself? Well, he, he was giving us these materials from 2004 onwards in batches. And uh, I would say pr- probably late in 2005, we realized the, there's a book here. And we engaged him around that. He gave it his blessing. But, uh, you know, once we had maybe come in uh, for maybe the fifth, sixth time asking for clarifications, he said, look, I don't want to be involved personally. Yeah. Uh, you take the decisions. You do what you need to do. Yeah. Um, is, is it the sort of book that you could read from beginning to end or could you just jump in and um, and read read something for, 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 for the day, a page a day, you know, kind of? Yeah, I think you can do that. Yeah. Um, we've tried to give it a bit of shape, so it's 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 organised thematically and somewhat chronologically. But really, you can dip in anywhere. Mm. Um, and also, there is an introduction by Barack Obama as well, um, which is yeah. which is quite lovely. Well, I'm I'm glad you think so. Yeah, I, apparently this is the first forward he's ever uh, done, and uh, it comes from. Uh, the ambassador to South Africa, uh, United States ambassador, coming in to to see our our work and looking at some of these materials and really being moved. Um, so we were really grateful for that. Mm. Is South Africa can it be judged a as it is right now a success from where it come from? Definitely, I, I think um, we underestimated uh, the extent to which we were damaged by the apartheid uh, era. Uh, And I think in a way Nelson Mandela himself underestimated uh, the the amount of work that needed to be done. What we're now realizing is that that dream of a quick transition um, is is a dream. Uh, It's going to take generations Mm. of hard work. But I think we're on the right course. Do you ever foresee a time um, without violence in in South Africa? Um, You know... uh, the the real question is, do we foresee a time when uh, humanity will not be, mm. um, you know, just just undermined fundamentally by violence? And I, I I don't see it myself. Do you see? Do you think South Africa is portrayed fairly by journalists um, to the outside world? No. Um, there are there are so many stories of 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 hope and of of encouragement and. And incredibly important processes taking place at community level, where people, you know, are taking charge of their lives and building structures and and uh, projects that that are meeting the needs of people. And you don't hear much of that in the media. No, we don't. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've certainly heard a little bit about that now, and we really appreciate you coming in, um, Vern, and telling us all about it. That's Vern Harris, who is the head of the Memory Program at the Nelson Mandela Foundation Centre of Memory and Dialogue. And go and, um, and get the book as well. It's called Conversations with Myself by Nelson Mandela.